It is right around the corner, the start of the 85th Texas legislative session. January 10th is the first gavel, but a lot has already been happening in the months leading up to the opening. Here this morning to talk about the expectations this year, State Senator from District 6, Sylvia Garcia, and from District 7, Senator Paul Betancourt. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. You know, morning. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. <laughs> a lot going on already, and I just, I, I realize that while you both have been around for a long time, in our view, you're relatively new to the state senator thing. I mean, Correct. And, and, and so I've been there three years, and you've been there. There are two. Two, two so. years. So, <laughs> but that's not that unusual. Up to five. That's not unusual because over half the Senate has only been there one term. Oh. I mean, because there's been such turnover right. in the last two or three uh, sessions. Uh, that that is, we're, 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 we're what the Senate looks like. Is that a, a built-in kind of positive thing? Because a lot of you are new, you're not jaundiced old senators who've been sitting there for years. Uh, Campbell, it's a great question. I think there's a lot of great energy that comes in with the newcomers in both political parties. Uh, Sylvia is the Hispanic caucus chair, I'm the Republican caucus chair. Half my members uh, are either freshmen or sophomores, so it's great to see that energy because we need it because we're tackling some pretty serious issues without a lot of money in this legislative session. And, and we've got at least half the Senate's been there a little longer, so I think I think it's good to have institutional knowledge. I think it's good to have seniority. I think it's good to have people around that that remember what happened mm -hmm. when the bill was first originally filed that we're now trying to change again. So I think there's a good balance. So what are the biggest challenges that you see from both sides of the aisle? What are you looking at? And what well, you I think I think we both are going to agree that the biggest challenge is going to be the budget. We have less sure. dollars, and any time you have less dollars, people start thinking of cutting. And the question is, where do you cut? And if you cut, what do you, what do you replace it with, or what do you do, or what can you reallocate from, for example, I always suggest that $800 million plus on border security is just too much money. We can reallocate some of that to some of the other priorities of the state, like education and health care and some other needs. Uh, so and I think I think the budget's number one. And on that request, the plus off the hit or million is definitely off the table at this point. I don't think there's going to be any increase in the budget that goes to the border because we've had a change in federal administration. So it's time for the feds to actually do their job on the border and for Texas to spend less on it. Now, when you look at the overall budget, Cambrell, what you've got is, uh, in the Houston area, folks know this, we've been in a pretty slow oil field recession for some time. And because sales tax revenue has been down for over a year and a half every month, it's a boat anchor on the state's uh, on the state's tax collections, and we're going to have, you know, five or eight billion less than we had last year. I mean, last the session, and it doesn't look like that's going to change. We'll get the revenue estimate the day before the session starts, uh, but I'm not expecting good news. Lieutenant Governor Patrick uh, came out a while back and said, "Here's my ten priorities, and one of them was the bathroom bill." I, I looked at that and I said, "With what's going on in North Carolina?" Is that something that, I, and I know that uh, uh, um, the state the Senate uh, Rep. Strauss said, House Speaker Strauss said, I, that's not my deal. Well, that's not my deal either. I think we should focus on classrooms and, and not bathrooms. I think we should focus on dealing with the issues of education. The, the court uh, said it's constitutionally, minimally constitutionally uh, uh, sufficient, but it's still a broken system. We need to do more for our classrooms and, and not the bathrooms. I think if you look at what the business community has said, um, their, their economic impact negative to the state would be $8.5 billion and would lose about 100,000 jobs. So it's more than just a social issue that we need to deal with. It's really okay, about looking to the future the of the state the and making sure it's an inviting inviting Texas okay, and not the study Texas the Senator answer. is quoting is totally bogus it the, the I actually read the study it talked about bills that weren't even implemented in Arizona and in Louisiana and it made a ridiculous estimate that somehow a bill that hasn't even been written yet uh, is going to cost us more jobs than we lost in the oil field recession it's preposterous now back to the lieutenant governor's intent he is this bill is not like North Carolina it's going to be more about keeping sexual predators out of the bathroom 
and that's what he stated over and over again. I expect that bill to be uh, passed, and so it's he's made actually quite a, uh, several comments that this is not going to be a North Carolina style bill. So let's wait till the bill is actually released before we score it, and and not put out these preposterous things that some bill is going to cost us eight billion dollars. It's going to be difficult to keep it from being compared to North Carolina, which is going to bring a negative view on what the state of Texas is doing. Do you agree with that? Well, but it's hard for you not to compare it to North Carolina when the, the words that are used all the time is like North Carolina. Well, no one. Tweets applauding North okay. Carolina. So I and, can tell you this, the Senator Patrick's not, bogus. not using those I mean, words. I respect the Senator, but the study is not bogus. I mean, the, the Texas Business Alliance, Alliance of Businesses would not engage a bogus study. They did, okay. and I sent I mean, out a press release, happen. and I challenged them, Cambrell, to come out with real numbers, and since I sent out that press release, I haven't heard a word from them, because that, that study is really bogus. Along the way, we're going to be looking at real numbers about how many people have actually been problematic in bathrooms, too, which is kind of out there as and well. It's zero. But we, we, that, I've kind of heard that, but I don't, I'll let There's you guys There's never know. been an <laughs> issue. <laughs> well, debate this. I just going to debate this in the legislature. No, yeah. What's bogus is the whole idea that we need to pass this bill. Let's talk There's about. There's not been one incident. If when Hero lost in Houston by 61 to 39. But this is that not the Hero ordinance. I, I know, but that but that means that the public does not want men in women's restrooms. So so that's what I the am. bill is going to say. Okay, so here okay. I am thinking we're going to be singing Kumbaya the state legislative. Now, well, ask, us a question. No, no. ask us a kumbaya question. Okay, then. so those things that are going to be positive. You talked about before we started, you said there are going to be things that are going on that you all agree on that you're going to be able to get done. The people of Texas are going to say, great, let's go for it. What are those things? The Child Protective Services is a wreck and it needs to be fixed. And we've already started in that direction with, with a, a, a interim, interim change in dollars and I think we're all in agreement that we need to fix that. I think we also all agree that we need to make sure that we do something for, for grandparents that are taking care of the, the children uh, of their, their of, of their children mm -hmm. uh, in foster care. We need to make sure that's that's addressed. So I think there are some things that, that we can agree on. The question, the fight's gonna be when it comes to cuts because we'll disagree what needs to be cut. For example, the governor's already suggested that we need to cut the, um, the franchise tax some more. Well, we've already cut it last time. I'm not, I'm not open to doing that again when we have so many other priorities. So I think it's going to be a, a challenge to really look at, at what to cut and what changes need to be made to make sure uh, that we, 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 we stick to Texas values but, but don't overspend our budget because we it's got to be balanced. Okay, part of the top 10 that Lieutenant Governor Patrick has put us on is to stop passing the trash or having educators go from one district to the next and prey on students with sexual relationships. We're going to pass that bill and we're going to look at ways to increase the Inspector General's capability at the Texas uh, Education, Education Agency. agency. Um, That's and, what we can agree and, on. And we also agree that maybe the money should follow the child in Child Protective Services so that we can have more uh, uh, more parents or more relatives take care of kids as opposed to just going straight to foster care. So actually what I like about a session like this, Cambrell, is that no is just as good as answer is yes. But sometimes when you don't have any money, you have to look for really intelligent solutions. And I hope that we'll have conservative solutions to Texas challenges. Well, that feels like a kumbaya moment. I think this is where we're going <laughs> to stop. So while you're there, we want to be able to talk with you. I know you're going to be busy doing stuff, but somehow we'll figure out a way to sky Come up Facebook. Come, come, come visit us. Uh, Opening. Live, Opening, yeah. opening day is January the 10th, yeah. and we'll be there 140 days, so come on by. Right. Come on, Thank we'll you. Skype in or we'll <laughs> Facebook chat in. We'll figure out, and we'll try to sing along with you while you're up there. Thank you. Senator Garcia, thank you so Happy much. Happy New Year. Senator Thank you so much as well, and Thanks. we appreciate it. Good luck in the year. Happy New Year. Thank you.